I'm David Kahn, the chairman of the Republican Liberty Caucus of Arizona. I'm here today with our secretary treasurer, Ben Beckhart, and we wanted to give everybody an update on what we've been up to over the past several months and where we see the RLC going over the next year. So the main thing we've done recently was with the end of our legislative session, we released our 2020 legislative scorecard so that we can get a good look at what legislators are doing the work to protect our liberties and which aren't. Ben, could you tell everybody a bit more about what's going on with that? Yeah, thank you, Dave. Hi, everyone. My name is Ben Beckhart. I'm the secretary and treasurer for the Arizona chapter of the RLC, Republican Liberty Caucus. <clears throat> um, if you were at our meeting last year, I did a long presentation on our scorecard from last year, so we did another one for this session. I'm going to keep this quick so I won't cover everything, but basically we like to do a scorecard every year so that it's easy for people to go on and see how their legislators are voting, which ones are voting for freedom and limited government and free markets, and then which ones aren't, and um, make it easy for people to see what bills they're voting on and all that. So hopefully it's a tool that people can use, um, especially if you're in a district where your incumbent's being challenged in a primary. It's good to know if they're a good incumbent or a not so good one. So uh, just going to review some things on our scorecard. Um, I'm going to throw up the, the top scores here on the screen so you can see it. But you can see uh, the perfect scores from uh, Travis Grantham, John Fillmore, Warren Peterson, Brett Roberts, and then over in the Senate, um, Eddie Farnsworth, David Farnsworth both scored perfect. Um, so that's really good. And then there's some other good high scores on there that weren't perfect, but really close. So they're really good people that we definitely um, wanted to recognize. Um, so just to throw out some observations on here, uh, those are the good guys that are scoring well, but some of the, the Republicans that don't score really well, just want to throw out these numbers. Um, some of the lower scoring Republicans in the House Mich this year, uh, Michelle Udall scored 83. Um, Pierce, Steve Pierce scored 81. Joanne Osborne scored 80. Kelly Townsend scored 80. That's a big move from her because Kelly Townsend was 97 last year. So there was a few votes this year that we didn't agree with her on. And so she, her score moved down a little bit. Uh, another one of the big movers was John Fillmore. He was, in, I think he was 82 last year and he was a perfect 100 this year. So um, some of the scores will differ, but hopefully the, the good ones will stay consistent on the top every year. So um, Rusty Bowers was a 78, Bob Thorpe was a 78. Lowest scoring member of the House Republican Caucus was um, Noel Campbell at 69. And then um, just to compare that to the Democrats, the highest scoring Democrats in the House were Alma Hernandez and Daniel Hernandez at 50, and then Jennifer Germain at 40. So they're, even the lower scoring Republicans, they still have a, a decent gap between the highest scoring Democrats. Uh, most of the Democrats, they scored around the 20s or 30s. So even, you know, the moderate Republicans, they still score significantly better than the Democrats. And I think that's important to highlight in a crucial election like this, where we have a one seat majority in the House. Um, we try to focus on advancing liberty and promoting the small government Republicans. But um, personally, I think we definitely need to support the nominees in the general election to make sure, because there is a difference between even, you know, moderate Republicans and Democrats. So um, that's just the way it is. And our scorecard shows that. Um, over in the Senate, you'll notice that some of these scores in the Senate were lower than those in the House. And that's partly because a lot of the, the bills that the Senate passed out were um, uh, fee increases, regulation increases. Uh, most of those didn't come, get signed into law because the session was cut short but they still voted and passed some of those out. So we included those in our scorecard. So that's why a lot of the scores in the Senate were lower. But uh, D David Farnsworth, Eddie Farnsworth still scored perfect. Sylvia Allen, Michelle Eugenti Rita scored really well uh, at 90. Um, the lowest scoring Republicans in the Senate were Paul Boyer at 50, and then Heather Carter and Kate Brophy McGee were both at 45. So just, just an observation there. Most Democrats in the Senate were in the 20s or lower. Uh, the highest scoring, there was no Democrats that scored in the 30s or higher. So they were pretty low scoring on there. Um, um, so that's our scorecard. And 
hopefully that'll give you an idea of where some of your legislators are at liberty wise um, and just I'll include a link to the scorecard in our video here so you can check it out and see what bills we scored them on how your legislator voted and all that um, I'll pass it back to Dave for the next thing so here at the RLC when we look at the scorecard each year it's the legislators that score above a 90 that we look to to provide endorsements and to build relationships with to work with and we have endorse a number of the top scoring Republicans this year, including Brett Roberts, Sean Abalik, Warren Peterson, Travis Grantham, and Michelle Ugenti Rita. But as Ben mentioned, we can also compare races. So one notable race is the race between Heather Carter and Nancy Bardo in LD15. And we haven't made an endorsement in this race the difference between the Liberty scores of these legislators is noteworthy. Yeah, um, I have a graphic I'll throw up for uh, the LD15 Senate race and it kind of shows the comparison between the voting records and the Liberty scores from Heather Carter and Nancy Barto. And like Dave said, we haven't endorsed in that race, but you can see their scores and see which one votes for Liberty more than the other. Um, Sylvia Allen is another one that has a contested primary. She's a senator from LD6 and she's She's uh, generally scored pretty well on our scorecards. Not perfect, but pretty well. And I think that's worth uh, throwing out there too, because we haven't endorsed her either, but she scores well. And if it ain't broke, maybe don't fix it. So that's my theology on that one. Um, Absolutely. In some of these races, what we're looking at is that the option isn't there to have a perfect defender of liberty come January, but we can certainly improve. And the better we get in each case, the the stronger our whole caucus will be in the state legislature. Yeah, so um, a few other contested primaries that people might be voting in. Over in LD13, um, you have um, in the House, you have Joanne Osborne and Timothy Dunn both running for re-election. Both of them score um, usually in the 70s or 80s on our scorecards, so they're okay, but uh, there's some room for improvement. And Steve Montenegro is running in that primary to challenge them. And when he was in the legislature before, we weren't around to do the scorecards then, but Americans for Prosperity, they did a scorecard when he was in the legislature and they line up pretty close with us. And Steve Montenegro scored fairly well on their scorecards. So personally, I think uh, Steve Montenegro would be an upgrade from the current members in the house on LD13. But again, we haven't endorsed in that race. That's just my personal opinion. And then I can also say in LD8 in Pinal County that uh, Neil Carter's running in that district. He's challenging two uh, incumbent legislators and uh, he's running against Frank Pratt, who's generally scored pretty low on our scorecards. Um, oh, I think 70s, 60s, um, which isn't great. And uh, then David Cook's the other one he's running against. He's scored pretty well. David Cook, is, I think he was a 90 on both really close to a 90 on both of our last scorecards. But he did vote for the $32 VLT tax. You know, he, he voted against the civil asset forfeiture reform bill. So he's got some room for improvement too. So uh, I think Neil Carter's a, a somebody to consider if you live in LD8. Um, and then we also endorsed Michelle Ugenti Rita. So we did endorse her and she's got a contested primary as well. Uh, we think she's really good. Basically, Michelle Ugenti Rita, she helped repeal the $32 VLT. Um, the bill kind of died and Ducey said he wouldn't support it, but then she was able to convince Ducey and the House and Senate leaders to include it in the budget. So it actually, uh, that fee repeals in next year because she was able to do that. And she's also been really good at standing up to Ducey's executive orders lately, standing up for freedom. Uh, so we definitely encourage everyone in LD23 to support Michelle Ugenti Rita. Um, and then the last one I want to highlight is the Maricopa County Sheriff's race. We endorsed Mike Crawford in that one. We think um, he's the best candidate in the race. And he, you know, he's pro-freedom, pro-liberty, he's a constitutional conservative that'll protect our community and keep our um, liberties, you know, um, there. So that's good. And also a lot of people want to know who's the best candidate to defeat Penn Zone in the general election. You know, I think that we need someone who has who has no ties to our pile that gives the GOP a fresh face. 
Um, and Mark Craw Mike Crawford is the only one in that race that really does that because Arpaio lost four years ago to Penzone by 13 points. So we need someone with no ties to Arpaio if we want to win that one. That's my opinion. But do uh, you have anything to add on that one, Dave? No, I think you summarized that really nicely. And, you know, with a lot of these races, we're looking not just at people who are committed to liberty and freedom, because some of these contests, there, there are good people on both sides, but we're looking at, you know, what's the most likely way to end up after the election with as strong a slate of elected officials as possible. And our endorsements reflect, you know, who we think will help us get to that. So we'd like to encourage people to support these candidates um, however you can, whether you vote for them, can, are able to donate money or time. Uh, in particular, we like to highlight, you know, Shauna Bollock could definitely use help over in uh, LD20, right? LD20, yes. Yeah, she's yes. being targeted by the Democrats to flip that seat, so she definitely needs our support. Yep. Um, and that's a good summary of who we're endorsing and the scorecard. Um, definitely reach out to us if you have any questions about either of those things. Um, going forward, we're working on getting up a website soon, which will provide information to can people looking to candidates and legislators looking to build ties with us, um, who we are, our statement of principles, and uh, what's going on with the organization. Um, you know, recent events have led to a lot of changes in what we were expecting to go on for everybody. Um, here at the RLC, we've had two of our board members for various reasons um, have to step down and we're looking at filling these vacancies um, through a vote of the current board. And then the people um, appointed would be up for election at our next um, general meeting, which usually occurs in March. And hopefully come next March, we'll be able to have a meeting in person with all of our members. Um, being able to meet with everybody is certainly one of the highlights of this. And we're talking about how to build over the next year. We, we want to do more events and not just events where we have a speaker, although we intend to do those at least once a quarter. We want to do events where we are lobbying the government to enact more pro-liberty measures, where various activism and getting people involved because it's important to vote in November, but it's just as important to provide our legislators support and partnership throughout the year, particularly while the legislature is in session. So we're looking on doing that over the next year. And we hope all of you would be able to help us with that. We'd encourage you to take a look at our national website in the statement of principles or at our facebook page and consider joining the rlc and if there's any events or areas you think would be beneficial for us to focus on please reach out to us at our facebook page we'd love to have that conversation absolutely yeah thanks for covering all that dave not much else to add just wanted to uh Thank you all for watching and also say that, you know, a lot of people are, are upset that we're seeing a lot of our freedoms going away lately. Uh, the best thing you can do to change that is to vote in the, in the primary election right now. And it's on August 4th, but you can send in your early ballot before July 29th and just vote for Liberty candidates that are defend our liberties and donate to their campaign so they can get their message out. That's really important. Um, so again, um, let us know if you have any comments, questions about what you'd like us to focus on. Um, if you want to get more involved, leave us a comment, send us a message, any of that. Um, so with that, thanks for watching. Have a good day.